Um, this is item 22 AB 2382. Yes, 2283. Uh, a recent report published by the Office of Attorney General reported that poverty was a significant cause for poor school attendance while retaining the requirement that children attend school. AB 2382 would do the following. In truancy double penalty for poor families require the county prior to uh, sanctioning benefits to consider families' efforts to comply with the district's attendance correction plan and three, to standardize the definition of regular school attendance. Current law requires that a family on CalWORKs basic needs grant be reduced when, a ch when children are not regular regularly attending schools. Additionally, newly implemented school attendance review board process also allows for truancy penalties. This double uh, penalty increases the likelihood of hardships and instability in the family and reduces the likelihood of children uh, attending school regularly. Uh, today we have, again, my two witnesses who will okay. uh, speak in support of the bill, and I respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you. Witnesses, please. Good afternoon. My name is Michelle Stolparvinsky with Children's Defense Fund California. We are proud to co-sponsor this bill. In California, one in four Californian children are poor, and we know that poverty stacks the odds against children. Education is one of the best pathways out of poverty, and we need to make sure our children are in school. The Attorney General's recent report on truancy highlights that poverty and related issues such as homelessness, job loss, eviction, limited transportation are one of the leading causes of truancy. Unfortunately, rather than provide additional supports to help poor children address those challenges and get to school, current law imposes a double truancy penalty on those families, which can make it even harder for those children to get to school. As of 2011, all California students and parents face fines and civil penalties for truancy. In addition, poor families who receive CalWORKs benefits can have their monthly grant amount reduced if their children are found to not be regularly attending school. Truancy penalties also push youth out of school and contribute to a cradle-to-prison pipeline that, um, that starts with inequities in early education and K-12 education and leads to marginalization and incarceration for far too many of our youth, especially youth of color. Research from California and across the nation shows that truancy penalties on poor families don't actually work uh, to improve school attendance. Imposing a financial penalty for truancy targeted at the state's poorest families is counterproductive and drives those families even deeper into poverty. If our goal is to end child poverty and ensure that children succeed in school, we must implement policies that address the root causes of attendance problems. We need policies that keep children in school, not, not penalties that keep families in poverty. Uh, children's Defense Fund works with families who experience firsthand how poverty um, can make it more difficult to attend school regularly. And I want to share um, briefly a written testimony from um, one of the youth that we work with, uh, Brianna Moore from Long Beach. My name is Brianna Moore. I am 15 years old, and I am a scholar with the Children's Defense Fund Freedom School Program. I write today to share my story and support for AB 2382. I live with my six siblings, three nieces and nephews, and my mother, who is currently unemployed. My mother has been a single mother for more than 10 years and constantly struggles to meet fam my family's basic needs. I have noticed that my mother is constantly under pressure, creating a huge amount of stress on her and our family. This last school year, my brother and I experienced significant challenges in getting to school due to the fact that my mom didn't always have the money to pay for our bus pass, and neither Long Beach Unified School District or the city provided, money, provided transportation for kids to get to school. In addition to this, the fact that we live in an overcrowded home makes it difficult for me to get proper rest. I, sleep on, I slept on the floor for most of last year, until recently when my mom was able to finally afford some couches, which I now sleep on. Getting ready for school and leaving the house on time is an everyday struggle, since we all share one restroom. Moreover, this year I miss school often due to health-related issues. <clears throat> I urge you to vote yes on AB 2382 because families like mine need more support and not more punishment. Low-income families struggle every day to meet their basic needs, and penalizing parents whose children miss school is wrong, ineffective, and should be against the law. I believe it's important we create laws that take the pressure and stress off of families who are struggling. We can eliminate this double truancy penalty that affects families like Brianna's. Um, I urge your support for this bill, and thank you. Okay, thank you. Other witnesses, please. Thank you, Chairman Bell. Be brief. Yeah. Chairman Bell and members of the committee, Jessica Bethlow with the Western Center on Law and Poverty. 
uh, we are also a co-sponsor of the bill. Just to add to what was already stated, I want to point out that the implementation of this CalWORKs truancy is very uneven across the state of California. In our survey of, of several counties, over almost 20 counties, what we found was that the definition of regularly attending ranged from three days missing school to 19 days of missing school. Uh, there is no state law defining regular attendance. We know that kids both in urban areas and rural areas where there is no busing, uh, where transportation can be difficult and people don't have money for for, bus, uh, for, for gas, um, these kids in rural areas are, are have especially high truancy rates. We don't think truancy is um, um, should be you know something that we support. We actually believe we should be reaching out to families and making sure that they do get to school and providing them the support they need to do so. Um, but but this this current policy it doesn't do that. And two two academic research pieces that were done here in California show that that not only does it not achieve that goal, but it makes it harder for these kids to get back to school. Uh, our current law makes it hard for poor kids to get to school. And it increases um, it increases economic hardships in those communities. Um, it's unevenly applied across the state. It's unfair. It's unjust, and it doesn't work. It should be repealed. And we appreciate your I vote. Okay, Thank you. Witnesses. Yeah, Kevin Asley and Coalition of California Welfare Rights Organizations. This statute was enacted in 1996 when there was no Ed Code truancy uh, statute. Oh, no. So now we have a double penalty, and. This Im impacts a lot of poor kids in that they end up living on an, at 19% of the supplemental poverty level once they've been subjected to this punitive okay. sanction. Thank the urgent I vote. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Jackie Ruth Heiser with the California Alliance of Child and Family Services, representing 115 nationally accredited private nonprofit organizations, and we strongly support the bill. Hi, Ruben Lizardo from Policy Link and also the Alliance for Boys, Men of Color. And we represent about 50 organizations across the state also strongly in support of the bill. It's pretty common sense. I hope we're going to get an I vote tonight. Yep. Um, other witnesses in support? How about opponents? Anybody opposed to this bill? Um, you know, I think my attitude is there's a lot of things on the books on CalWORKs that were put on after 1996 when they did the, the law that are just administrative wastefulness that um, cause us to spend a lot of money on staff instead of putting the money into the basic grant and this is one of them and we got to eliminate all these kind of things basically and it does discriminate against large families also and we already punish them by having a a limit a maximum family limit we punish large families and um, I don't know about you but I'm from a large family so that's the way it goes. I'm elected. <laughs> I got nine brothers and sisters, <laughs> so I, 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 I think I think it's a just you know. So if you have a large family, you know, you have one kid that doesn't attend school, right? Am I am I missing something? Right? No, you got it. On I phone. mean, you have yeah. one kid that doesn't that doesn't go to school, and I had we had you know maybe a few more than one in our family that kind of cut you know and got in trouble. I don't know. I won't say who, but. Uh, <laughs> If you don't, if you don't go, then then you're you're off, right? You're penalized, and I don't think that's right. So I have a, I think that's a it's a nonsensical law that punishes families. So we can't we can't do that. That's not what we're about. So I support the bill and would like to see the bill approved when we have a uh, quorum. Thank you, Senator. Which we will pretty soon. Appreciate it.